joy kind of day, ain't it? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Oh, I was hoping this would be a specially cheerful day. And sure enough, the sun came a-popping into the clearest sky okay, ever. Okay, it is a very nice day, 74. Oh, I sure am plum glad for that today is such a cheerful day, because today... Tell me, for heaven's sake, turn off the sweetness and light. I mean, that much good cheer and enthusiasm this hour in the morning is absolutely disgusting. Mr. Witt. Oh, Tammy, please. It is so early. Before I can stand that sunny disposition of yours, I'm afraid I'll need more coffee. <laughs> there. Now, Miss Sunshine, what is troubling you? Well, nothing troublesome, Mr. Weir. I'm fair popping for joy, because today is the big day. I know, it, it's annual Hush Puppy Day in Dixieland. <laughs> Shut my mouth, you all. I wish you'd let me tell you what day it is. Tammy, I know what day it is. It is the day that is near and dear to the heart of every loyal, dedicated, red-blooded American. It's payday. Besides that, Mr. Weir, today is Mr. Red's birthday. No, it's not, Mr. Yeah. I know, and Mr. It is. Oh, my heavens, it is. We've been... <laughs> Mr. Weir, I've already taken care of that. You are? I'm planning a surprise party for him, and I'd like you to attend. Uh, oh, I'd be delighted. I'm going to serve hog liver soup, pokeweed salad, stuffed catfish, and mustard greens. What an incredible menu. <laughs> Leave it to you to prepare a bountiful repast fit for the discriminating taste of Omer Khayyam himself. Well, thank you, Mr. Weir. And if your friend Mr. Khayyam is in town, bring him along. <laughs> Tell Mother, uh, goodbye, Tammy, and thank you. Tammy, what are you doing talking to that river girl? Don't you have anything better to do with your time? Tammy called to invite us to a surprise birthday party she's throwing tonight for Mr. Brent. She's what? She is throwing a surprise... Never mind, I heard you. What a perfectly <laughs> marvelous idea. In the gloom of the evening, John returns home, tired from his business trip, certain that no one has given a thought to him on his birthday. He opens the door. The lights go on. A chorus of voices sing happy birthday and an evening of gaiety and merriment is staged for his benefit. He will be so grateful to his hostess. Yes, his little secretary, Tammy. No, his warm friend and neighbor, Lavinia Tate. <laughs> but, Mom, I am sick and tired of that backwoods warden and pushing me further into the background of John's life. Now, I know what you mean, Mama. If your appearances at the Brent Place become any more infrequent, you'll be outranked by the milkman. <laughs> but with me taking over as hostess at the party tonight, that could all change. And maybe Mr. Brent will be so impressed, he'll finally propose. Possibly. Anyway, when opportunity knocks, I like to be on the other side of the door. I'll persuade Tammy that the party should be thrown by me. After all, someone giving a party for John Brent should be more sophisticated than Tammy, more, more mature, more... More desperate. That's the word. <laughs> I'll move this whole party around to my own advantage. Mama, you're so devious and, and cunning and underhanded. I, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Do you think I'll ever get to be like you? Well, maybe, dear, if you try hard. The only thing that worries me is that I sometimes detect a touch of sentimentality in you that you probably inherited from your father. Well, do you think maybe I'll outgrow it? Well, let's hope so, dear. <laughs> let's hope so. <laughs> That just about does it. Everything's all packed and ready for transporting. Whee! I ain't never seen such a mess of my water vittles. You know, I sure am glad you take me along to the do. Well, that's the least I could do, Hank. 
After you went and caught this granddaddy of a catfish, been so much help and dole. This would be the first time I ever set foot into a big fancy shack like that Brent place. You know, I've been thinking on that, Hank. Now, you're a mighty fine boy, but I best bone you up on some behaving manners before that do tonight. <laughs> this here book on acting manners was given to me and Grandma when we was wed. You needed a book to tell you how to act after you'd wed? Of course not. But it made a dandy fine doorstop. Oh. Now, come on, we best study on it a while. Sit down there and let me spike your brains with some of the more refined do's and don'ts. Now then, according to what it says here, the first thing you got to learn is not to put your elbows on the table. You're joshing. No, it says so right here. How am I lift up my bill hand if I ain't got my elbows on the table? Now, you ain't supposed to load up your knife with so much that you gotta brace yourself. And sit up straight and hold your head back. If I do that, I can't find my mouth. This book's plumb full of learning. Here to this. The person that's sitting next to you is called your neighbor in society. Well, how they do? It says here, you talk a spell to your neighbor on your right, then to the neighbor on your left. I don't know, Mordecai. That there book says a lot about talking to your neighbor and keeping your elbows off the table. But does it tell you which hand you stop up your gravy with? Here's a clue. When in doubt as to what to do, watch your hostess and do what she does. So, if your hostess sops up her gravy with the right hand, why, well, you do likewise. <laughs> but keep your elbows off the table. <laughs> Hello? Mrs. Brandt? Well, this is a surprise. What a wonderful birthday present for your son. We thought that you were still in Europe. I was counting on that, Wayne. That's why I called you. I'm arriving this afternoon, so have my room prepared. And remember, not one word to John. I want to surprise him. Oh, you can count on me. Uh, mum's the word, Mumsy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Brent, but I, I, I couldn't resist that little whimsy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, yes, ma'am, I'll take care of everything. R uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, goodbye now. Oh. Oh. oh! What a gay, mad day this is going to be. <laughs> One can't help but admire Dwayne. He's always so calm, collected, and composed. Oh, that's because he's had a plenty full amount of coffee today. <laughs> Well, would you like some, Miss Tate? Uh, yes, please. Uh, Tammy, the reason I'm here is to talk to you about the party tonight. Oh, I purely hope you'll come, Miss Tate, because the truth is we ain't seen much of you around here lately. Well, how sweet of you to notice. <laughs> the party's gonna be a real humdinger, and I'm so prideful that I thought about it. Oh, Mr. Brent's been so good and kind to me since I've been here, I just gotta show him how grateful I am to him. And it's because Mr. Brent is so good and kind that I want to talk to you woman to woman. You see, Tammy, you're placing yourself in a very dangerous position. Glory, Miss Tate, how's that? By creating a situation that you're not equipped to handle. How'd I be fixing to do that? Tammy, John Brent is a cultured and refined man who is accustomed to nothing but the finest. The wrong type of party would offend him terribly and, I'm afraid, place you in an unenviable position of embarrassment. But, Miss Tate, I've been planning for so long. And Grandpa's bringing over all the vittles I want up and... Really, Tammy, serving country-type vittles, as you call them, at a party for John Brent would be the epitome of bad taste. <laughs> I didn't mean to do nothing distasteful, ma'am. Of course you didn't. Dear, it's, it's just that you don't have the experience to take on a project like this. It's a fact truth, Miss Tate. I ain't never tried to throw a real elegant party before, but this... You're very fortunate that I heard about it and that I like you. <laughs> I am? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Out of the goodness of my heart, I'm going to take the responsibilities of this party off your hands. Miss <laughs> Tate, I wouldn't want you to be doing that. Tammy, you know my relationship with Mr. Brent is a close one of long standing. 
Yes, ma'am, but I was... I know his likes and his dislikes. And I assure you, I am the one person who can turn this potential disaster you've planned into a sparkling, successful affair. Miss Tate, I Believe me, Tammy, after the party, you'll thank me. Yes, ma'am. I reckon I was just whistling in the wind to think that I could give a do for the likes of Mr. Brayer. I'm glad you see it that way, dear. I'm engaged in the services of the most fashionable caterers in New Orleans. Madame Beaumont will prepare the dinner. Uh, that's how it's done in better circles. <gasps> Keep your eyes open tonight, Tammy. You're young and you have a lot to learn. Kiss me. I brung all the vittles, and I put them in the icebox in the kitchen. Oh, I've been feeling so blue, I forgot to run home and stop you from bringing the vittles. What's the matter, child? Well, Miss Tate's throwing the big party tonight, and so I have to ask you to take back the food. Well, if that don't be... Why would she do a thing like that? Well, the, the way Miss Tate explains it, it makes a lot of sense. I think. <laughs> well, she'll just spoil the whole do, that's what. She'll cook up city food and fancy everything up and, and just nervous the whole evening right into the ground. No, Grandpa, she's a plum wizard throwing a do. She even said so herself. Well, it just don't seem fair, seeing as how it was your idea and all. Ooh, I'd like to tell that lady three or two things. I... Oh, Grandpa, don't go to fussing at yourself. You just go in the kitchen and get rid of the vittles before the caterers gets yeah. here. Before the who gets here? Well, Miss Tate's hired a cake dress. That's a cookout lady who comes to your house and wops up your vittles. Well, that lets the cat plumb out in the bag. This has got to be the first fancy do Miss Tate's ever throwed. Otherwise, she wouldn't have to hire a, a lady from the outside to come in and do her cooking. You reckon, Grandpa? Well, sure. But we won't let on. We don't want to nervous her up any more than she already is. <laughs> You'll find your quarters over the garage in back, Martin. I'll have dinner sent out to you. Very good, Mrs. Brent. Well, that must be the caterer's now. Yes, she finally condescended to get here. <laughs> I must say, Madame Beaumont, this is unforgivable of you worrying me like this. I beg your pardon. Oh, now, don't get on your high horse with me. You're already so late, we've no time to bicker. Come in. <laughs> I hope you told your driver to take the food to the servant's entrance. Now, just a minute. Who are you? And where's Mr. Brent? I am Mrs. Tate, the woman who's paying you. Mr. Brent will be here tonight. But unless you get dinner started immediately, the whole surprise party for him will be a disaster. <laughs> now, if you'll be good enough to follow me, I'll take you to the kitchen. I'm sorry, Mrs. Haight. Tate. <laughs> this way, please. I sure got a hand it to you, Miss Tate. You set up this table real elegant like. Yes, Tammy. This is the caterer's, Madame Beaumont. I know she's anxious to get started, considering she's so late. My name's Tammy Tarleton, and I'm pleased to be making your acquaintance. We can dispense with a small talk, Tammy. Madame Beaumont came here to work, and I suggest she get at it at once. <laughs> Who is that rude, overbearing woman? Well, that's Miss Tate. She's a neighbor of Mr. Brandt's. And you mustn't let her fret you if she's a mite on the uppity side. You see, she's been planning this party with something real special for Mr. Brent, on account of she's real fond of him. And is Mr. Brent real fond of her? Well, Mr. Brent's got such a big heart, he's practically fond of practically anybody who's people. I bet he's mighty fond of you. You're my kind of people. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Now, I, I better get out to that kitchen. Oh, it's right through there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, how do you do? And who might you be? Uh, howdy. I'm Mordecai Tarleton, ma'am. 
Any relation to that nice young girl I just met? Oh, you must be talking about Tammy. Yes, ma'am, I'm her grandpa. I bet you're the caterer's lady. Well, yes, that's what I'm being called. Oh, well, uh, I'll have me and my fixings out of your way in just a jiffy. I uh, bet you got a whole truckload out there you'll be wanting to bring in. As a matter of fact, I um, I don't have any victuals. You see, my, my truck broke down. <laughs> well, what's wrong with these victuals? Oh, oh, nothing, ma'am. Uh, this is what Tammy was going to whomp up for the big do, but it... It ain't uppity enough for that, Miss Tate. Oh. Let's see this food. Well, here's the mustard greens. Mm -hmm. Down there is the makings for pokeweed salad. And over here is the makings for corn pone. And, 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 and this here is the catfish that Tammy was going to poke. <laughs> Mr. Tarleton, with your permission, I'd like to serve your food. Oh, ma'am. You best not do that. That Miss Tate would be fit to take off like a buzzard from a hot walk if you was to serve up river vittles. Really? It just so happens that one of my specialties is whomping up river vittles. For true? For true. Mr. Tarleton, hand me that apron. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Yes, it was a surprise, all right. Really, John? Thank you. I'm so glad. Thank you. Miss <laughs> Tate, I told Madame Beaumont what you told me to tell her about hurrying up with the dinner, and she told me to tell you to... Uh, uh, well, anyway, the vittles will be ready in two shakes. <laughs> well, I hope so. I'm sorry about the dinner being so late, John, but Madame Beaumont is a very difficult person. Mrs. Brent. Yes, Martin. I intercepted the caterers, paid her off, and sent her on her way. Very <laughs> good. Dinner is served. Lavinia? Uh, Tammy? Uh, Gloria? <laughs> Don't look at me, Sonny. <laughs> Lavinia, the table looks lovely. Thank you, John. Hank, can that manner and book learn you nothing? What am I doing wrong? You're supposed to put your napkin in your lap. Well, if I do that there, how can I keep him dribbling on my shirt? <laughs> Good gun head, when nobody's looking, you use your tie. <laughs> oh! <laughs> This has a most unusual flavor, Lavinia. What is it? But I don't know. I ordered vicious was. If I didn't know better, I would swear this was Tammy's hog liver soup. <laughs> Miss Tate said it's something called vicious squab. Well, if it is, it's got a hog next to kin. <laughs> Whatever this is, Mother, it isn't what you ordered. That Beaumont woman is impossible. I'll see about this. I've gone to too much trouble to let her spoil my dinner. <laughs> Please, Miss Tate, don't fret the poor lady. She's doing her best. And I'd say her best is very good. I don't see why you're so upset, Lavinia. This soup is delicious. <laughs> why, yes, it is superbly different, isn't it? <laughs> Gloria, honey, there must be something wrong with your taste buds. <laughs> well, thank you, Charles. Yes, ma'am. That there is pokeweed salad, or else my eyeballs are screwed in sideways. Nonsense. It's probably limestone lettuce. Oh. Who's going to toss a salad? Well, why don't you do it, Hank? Okay. Y'all hold your plates up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Hank, but uh, pass it around. It's more fun to toss our own. <laughs> Okay, y'all have a ball. <laughs> Thank you, Hank. Gotta hand it 
to you, Hank. You take to these society ways like a crow to a cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> woman in the kitchen. She's destroying my party. Nothing wrong with catfish, Lavinia. Matter of fact, I'm quite partial to it. Well, you might even like it, Miss Tate, if you just take a nibble on it. I want that thing removed! Oh. <laughs> what you doing? What the matter in book says. Do what your hostess does. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Mind your matter, sonny. <laughs> Charles? Yes, Miss Tate? Tell Madame Beaumont I want to see her this instant. Yes, ma'am. Did you call me Mrs. Tate? Madame Beaumont, I demand an explanation for this outrage. Mrs. Brent, mother. Mother? <laughs> Mother, you're incorrigible. Why didn't you tell me you were coming? I, I didn't even know you were in the country. I wanted to surprise you. When I called Dwayne, I told him not to tell you. Happy birthday, son. This is the nicest surprise I could have had. Lavinia, I want you to meet my best girl. Lavinia? Mr. Brent, this has been a spang out glad for do. <laughs> All's well that ends well. Oh, thanks to uh, Mother Brent. Well, thank you, gentlemen. And coming from a Tarleton, that's quite a compliment. She can poach catfish sweeter than any woman in Dushaw County. <laughs> when it comes to vittling the man proper, there ain't no substitute for a mother's loving hand. I still can't get over you insisting on washing the dishes. After that catastrophic experience with Mrs. Brent, I found it necessary to resort to the extreme of demonstrating abject humility. In other words, you're eating crow. You could put it that way. But that it's an improvement on that revolting swamp fare we dined on tonight. But, Mama, why do I have to be in on all this humility? Because it's a good lesson for you, my dear, and how to look the part of a good sport. Remember, look like one, but never be one. <laughs> Mama, you never cease to be an inspiration to me. <laughs> Good girl. Are you sure you don't want any help? Oh, no, we're having fun, aren't we, Gloria? <laughs> After all, woman's places in the kitchen, I always say. Well, I do appreciate your pitching in like this, Lavinia. Why don't you and Gloria come over and have breakfast with John and me in the morning? How marvelous. You're a wonderful, sweet woman, Mother Brent. We'll come over early, and you must let me help. And they do say I have a flair with French pancakes. <laughs> well, thank you, Lavinia. But I'm serving my favorite breakfast, hog jowls and hominy grits. <laughs> oh, that'll be just yummy. <laughs> 